أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد for the purpose of asking Allah سبحانه وتعالى to give us توفيق and إخلاص in uh, pursuing knowledge and also in inshallah being able to finish uh, this course with uh, improving our self in learning a little bit more about Ulum Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam under the inaya of Imam Al Hujja. Please let's all recite dua Al Faraj. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyik al Hujja ibn al Hassan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhi al Saati wa fi kulli Saa. وليا وحافظا وقائدا مناصرا ودليلا معينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد uh, We will be starting uh, with uh, دروس تمهيدية في الفقه الاستدلالي and um, this is indeed an interesting uh, topic uh, to learn most certainly there are some of you who might have um, come across um, certain aspects of fiqh and learning uh, the different um, dynamics of ilmu sharia but as far as al fiqh al istidlali is concerned unfortunately there is a very uh, big vacuum when it comes to the english language and that's why I found it upon myself to um, start this course for those who are interested in delving into aspects of uh, ilm al-fiqh but in a more analytical way. I will assume that all of you one way or another has studied um, different things that would act as preliminaries for or muqaddimat for Al-Fiqh Al-Istidlali In particular, Usul Al-Fiqh, some Arabic language Preferably Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqhiyya, preferably Ilm Al-Rijal And um, this is not the first time I have taught uh, books from Al-Sheikh Al-Irawani I taught Durus uh, Tamhidiyya fi Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqhiyya which I also translated and it will be published in London I uh, taught Durus Tamhidiyya Fil Qawaid Al-Rijaliyya and that just this week um, came out of the print from uh, Britain, from ICAS so of course it's always very important to look into those um, other ulum which I will be explaining a little bit about today but to refresh your mind uh, as much as possible now there is going to be areas where one might not understand or comprehend the whole argument of what Sheikh Al-Irawani is putting forward he's going to say uh, in At-Tahar al maiya for example he's going to say that uh, this is what has been said about uh, the ruling of uh, rainwater and some fuqaha have said this about the ruling of rainwater and then other fuqaha have said that about rain, the ruling of rainwater in favor and against and then this might confuse you because the way the argument is put forward uh, you feel so much confident that this is a wonderful valid argument then Sheikh Al-Irawani comes and destroys the whole argument and then you say to yourself how naive was I in not picking up these very very valuable points put forward for example by other fuqaha or by Sheikh Al-Irawani and this is when you really really appreciate the process of the of what the faqih goes through just to issue 
a fatwa. Unfortunately, most people do not see that. The only uh, area of where they see the faqih falling short is in al-fiqh al-ikhtilafi or al-masail al-khilafiyya areas of disputes where fuqaha do not have a, uh, a a united a unanimous view as far as one particular ruling but when you look at the process the whole structure of what the faqih goes through just to understand a particular hukum shar'i then that is when you will appreciate all of this without doubt we know that with the era of al ghaiba which is what i'm going to be speaking about next week inshallah during zaman al ghaiba we do know that it is difficult it is not the ideal situation that we would want to be in and this is why when a faqih issues a fatwa the fatwa is not based on him having absolute knowledge in it being correspondent to reality there is no faqih that says that this hukum is in my opinion this hukum is musibun lil waqi' which means cor corresponding to reality there's no faqih that says that the only week we don't have absolute yaqeen we can't swear on the quran that this is uh, the way that the whole detailed process of for example um uh, tahara or najasa was and is if that's what if that was the case then there wouldn't be a dispute there wouldn't be areas of khilaf or difference but does that mean that we will no longer um be able to refer back to the faqih during zaman al ghaiba or are we able to the faqih says yes i understand that these fatwas are not correspondent to reality they might be different in all we know that the form of salah that we're doing is correspondent to reality we can say with confidence with absolute certainty this is how in general this is how rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi prayed but in detail we refer back to the ahkam masadur tashri' a four quran sunnah aql and ijma the faqih says yes in detail it's not musibun lil waqi' it is mubri'un Where's the Hamza? Right? You, by you following the fatwa, you will be free of any accountability, free of any responsibility. As long as he is a jurist, he is a faqih, he is a mujtahid, who is jami'u shara'at, has all of the criterions, the conditions for uh ijtihad and faqaha so of course there are many uh aspects that need to be discussed but let's just start with um th uh, the first introduction the first of two introductions i'll try to keep it with two introductions and then get into the text uh if needed i'll i'll have to go for three introductions um we all know that with um talabul ilm you need to have a long hausala you need to be very very patient and when you get to higher levels you need to uh allow the uh patience to uh reach its peak because 
um, everything is worked in a, 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 a gradual um, steps and lines. You know, there are some fuqaha who were mujtahids and when they were giving their dars kharij, it took them 30, sometimes 40 years to complete a dawra, one dawra from the beginning of ibadat to the end of mu'amalat. So obviously, you know, um, that needs a lot of time. You know, Marhum said Khu'i, it's very known how long his dawra of, of kharij was, whether it be in fiqh or whether it be in uh, usul. So we need a lot of a lot of patience. Maybe those details that you might be listening to might not be of relevance at the time, but it might be uh, later on. When it does come to fiqh, what are we studying in al-fiqh al-istidlali? What is al-fiqh al-istidlali? Is it anything to do with the history of fiqh, tarikh al-fiqh? The answer is maybe. But tarikh al-fiqh is a different ilm. Is it to do with fiqh in its dry sense? This halal, that haram in its fatwa'i sense? No, it doesn't. Does it have to do with anything with al-mustalahat al fiqhiyya that plays a role? But that's a different ilm. How about al-fiqh al-muqaran? Now you have al-fiqh al-muqaran between... Um, different ulama as far as you know uh, difference of opinion is concerned we also have fiqh al-muqaran between the five madhahib you also have usul al-fiqh no need for me to explain what usul al-fiqh is you also have al-qawaid al-fiqh here which talks about the principles that are or the maxims that are used in al-fiqh for example asalatul tahara kullu shay'in laka tahir hatta ta'lam annahu najis everything is tahir unless otherwise you have yaqeen and certainty that it, it, it is najis asalatul Tahara. This is a qaida fiqhiyya applicable in different scenarios throughout fiqh, not in one, not in one area. Then we have al-fiqh al-istidlali, which makes reference to the details of the procedure of what a faqih needs to do in order to deduce a fatwa in order to extract the uh, results from the detailed masadir or sources of a sharia again which is al-quran al-sunnah al-aql and ijma again preferably we should have already gone through these kind of um, ulum already uh, muqaran means comparative sorry I should say that muqaran means comparative tarikh al-fiqh means the history of fiqh al-mustalahat al-fiqh means the fiqh terminology and um, al-qawaid we already explained what does fiqh mean Literally, it means to understand, to comprehend, right? This is one of the verses in the Holy Quran. قَالُوا يَا شُعَيْبٌ مَا نَفْقَهُ كَثِيرًا مِمَّا تَقُولُ Oh Shu'ayb, we don't understand, we cannot comprehend what it is that you are saying. As for a istilah, علم الفقه is the knowledge of the details of Sharia, knowledge of the details or knowledge of the rulings of Sharia. 
That's why for us, Sharia, Sharia is something that is sacred, something that encompasses our religion. Whereas fiqh, which is a lower level of Sharia, carries a lot of dynamics. In the realm of Sharia, you don't have that flexibility or options of this or that. You look at it as a whole. Whereas in Ilmul Fiqh, no, you look at it in its in its dynamics, in aspects of halal and haram, and arguing each and every one of them. And that's why a faqih never does no copy paste. Each faqih extracts and deduces all of these things independently on his own. Now we're going to use these words frequently, so let's understand them. Faqih means a jurist. Fuqaha is plural for faqih. So you have faqih, fuqaha. Faqaha means juristic or the concept of jurisprudence. The ability of becoming that jurist. Mutafaqih means someone who wants to assume the position of a faqih. That's inshallah who we are. Natafaqah fiddin. We try to learn about religion. We try to learn about fiqh. لِيَتَفَقَّهُ as the Qur'an itself says. So they can learn and try and attempt to learn about religion. Fiqh means jurisprudence. And what does afqah mean? What is the definition of fiqh? Hopefully all of you have a little uh, notebook that you're writing down some of the notes that we're, that we're mentioning so we don't lose uh, momentum. Let's dissect uh, this tarif. This is a um, general tarif that has uh, been given. Now maybe there might be uh, other kind of tarifs given definitions given but this is the overall definition that is uh, given al-ilm because of course it's ilm right and tamayuz al-ilm bi tamayuz mawdu'atiha the an, a science a ilm is distinctive in the subject matter of what that ilm carries the mawdu, the subject matter of each ilm is going to be different than the other ilm or else we'll have a qatipati kind of ilm and everything is in everything. No, ilm al-mantiq is, its subject matter is al-fikr al-sahih, the process for correct thinking, ilm al or ilmul nahu is uh, the principles for uh, the kalima or the process for speaking correctly, geography, uh, physics, philosophy, fiqh, all other, uloom, bil ahkam. Al-Shari'iyah. What does here Al-Ahkam Al-Shari'iyah mean? Trying to distinguish uh, Al-Ahkam Al-Shari'iyah because we have Ahkam Ahkam that are either Aqliya, which means rational, or Hissiyah, 
which is sensual or shar'iya, which is religious. Now shar'iya we could also say ta'abbu diya, which means based on devotion. It has, it's not based on uh, reason. It is not based on um, sensual uh, knowledge. And it is based on shara. Now, when I say, when I use the word <coughs> ahkam, I'm also, I also want to make sure that I am not referring to, for example, the essence of something, nor am I uh, referring to the afal of something. A hukm is a a uh, detailed ruling, a general law, a ruling, a law, or laws that are in reference to the uh, concept itself and not the act itself. All right? It's not al-ilm bil-af'al al-shar'iyya, al-af'al al-shar'iyya, standing or doing this or doing that. No, it's al-ilm bil-ahkam al-shar'iyya, saying shar'iyya because it is removing the concept of it being uh, a ilm based on aql. What did we say aql was again? Reason on it being, it's not aql, nor is it sensual, empirical, it's not based on Empirical knowledge, it is based on shar'i knowledge. Okay? And shar'i knowledge is in reference to Quran, Sunnah, al-aql in its particular specific meaning and ijma'. Please remember when we talk about masadur al-tashri' or the sources of legislation and we use the word aql, we don't mean al-aql al-juz'i, the particular aql. We don't mean the aql in the Sunni understanding, which means just the normal comparative kind of deduction, which refers back to uh, Qiyas, which is what we don't um, uh, accept. You can say prescribed, you can say uh, religious, you can say legislative. Okay, what was the, okay, al-ilm bil-ahkam, knowledge of the uh, shari rulings that are detailed. Why? When we say al-far'iyya, when we say al-far'iyya, we are <coughs> referring to the detailed aspects, not al-usuliya. Al-far'iya means individual cases, the law, the ruling of rainwater, the ruling of istinja for this situation. We're not talking about general rulings. What Science deals with the qawaid amma, the general rulings, usul al-fiqh. Usul al-fiqh says to you that you have, for example, aslul bara'a. Usul al-fiqh says to you that you look at this particular situation in that way. That's why they're qawaid amma, they're uh, general principles applied to different cases in different scenarios okay so al far'iyya means the details because al ahkam al aqliyya are 
kulliya. They are not juz'iyya. Uh, rational principles are universal. They are not particular. They cannot be individualized. Right? For example, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Or, for example, al kul akbaru min al juz. The universal is larger than the particular. That's a hukum. Aqli kulli. Is that what we deal with here in fiqh? The answer is no. Al ahkam al far'iyya. Where do we get this knowledge of al ahkam al shar'iyya, al far'iyya, from the detailed evidence and arguments that it has? You can add here in the end of this, you can add bil istidlal through analysis, through arguments, through arguments. Now, with um, a Sheikh al Irawani in the Muqaddimah, in the introduction of his book, he starts to speak about the um, evolution of fiqh and of course that's very very important for us to learn how did al-fiqh al-imami how did shia fiqh evolve from the time of the ma'sumin alayhim salam all the way down to the beginning of al-ghayb al-kubra and from them from then its progress uh till today what's the difference between the aspect of the fatwa or the hukum and the dalil, the evidence that supports the fatwa or the supports the results that the faqih or the mufti had in issuing the fatwa. That's why we call it the fatwa as, as far as the hukum is concerned and the dalil as far as the mustanad is concerned. What did the faqih Used to rely on as far as deducing this particular ruling. That's the whole thing that we are going, inshallah, to be uh, to 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 be learning. Okay. Now, there's a important element that we need to remind ourselves of, and that is the significance of al-fiqh al-imami. And how it is different to other um, schools of fiqh. In particular, with al-fiqh al-imami, its main emphasis is on al-nas al-shari. What does nas mean? Text. Textual evidence. Based on text. Not based on opinion and that's why we can fairly say that al-fiqh al-imami is based on madrasatul nas and al-fiqh al-sunni is based on madrasatul ra'i nas means text ra'i means opinion opinionated jurisprudence and this is why one of the problems that exists in our view from a Shi'i perspective, one of the problems that exists in the Sunni understanding of fiqh is what they call al-ijtihad fi qibal al-nas or al-ra'i fi qibal al-nas. Ijtihads or an opinion in opposition to textual evidence. You have textual evidence right there in front of you, then you have someone who wants to give an opinion completely 
against the textual evidence that exists. Can anyone give me an example of this that, that occurred during the early stages of the evolution of Islam itself? Sayyid Sharaf al-Din al uh, Sayyid Sharaf al-Din um, al-Amili has uh, a book called Al-Ijtihad uh, fi Qibal al-Nas. Can anyone give me an example? Is it a bit at? Yes, but what's an example? Like um, they are praying uh, Mustahab Salat uh, in Jama'ah. Okay. Folding hands. Good example is Muta, the prohibition of Muta. As the second Khalifa had said, متعتان كانتا على عهد رسول الله وأنا أحرمهما وأعاقب عليهما There are two types of متعه that were uh, permissible during the time of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله and I uh, prohibit them. This is اجتهاد. They say this what he had the authority because he was able to have an opinion in opposition to the nas al-ra'i that's why even in tafsir al-quran we do not accept al-tafsir bil-ra'i whereas uh, sunni ulama in their tafsir they allow al-tafsir bil-ra'i opinionated tafsir based on their uh, opinion Another example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, he said to the people around him, Haluma li aktub lakum kitaban len tadillu ba'di abada. And they said, and then other people said, now this and that. And then they said, kafana kitabullah, suffice us be with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That is, again, uh, an opinion in opposition to the Nas. Here, one significant difference between Al-Fiqh Al-Imami and Al-Fiqh Al-Ghayr Imami, non-Imami Fiqh, is Madrasatul Nas and Madrasatul Ra'i. Interesting topic to get into. And inshallah, we will uh, further further into that. Anyway, just in case you, you don't know, we are going to be uh, reading from and studying from um, this book, okay, by Sheikh Al-Irawani, uh, Sheikh Baqir Al-Irawani. Uh, it is called Durus Tamhidiyya Fil Fiqh Al-Istidlali. You can download it on the internet. You can print it out. That would be better. If you can purchase a copy, that would be even better. There, are, I'm, I'm also going to um, uh, use this book that um, will assist us in further understanding and also uh, developing the argument even uh, further. And this was printed by uh, Jami'atul Mustafa as well. I'm also very thankful that Dr. Ali al Samail has translated a lot of uh, this book, Sheikh Baqir al-Irawani's book already. Some parts have not been edited with footnotes, some parts have been edited with footnotes. So we will rely on that as well, along with Arabic text. If you have uh, ability to read in Farsi, you can uh, also get this book in Farsi as well, it, uh, it's been translated into Farsi, so we have that option. Oh, Sheikh Baqal Irawani is a, a famous uh, alim, famous scholar. I in um, in Qom he was. I have the I had the privilege of meeting him many many times. Alhamdulillah, uh, 
Now he lives in Najaf. He was ordered by a Sayyid Sistani to return back to Najaf al Ashraf after the fall of Saddam. And he has many uh, books, but the, uh, the method of his writing is very, very unique because he is among the first of ulama who wrote books in such a uh, way that it can be taken as a textbook and also in very, very uh, simple language. And if you listen to his lectures, that's also how he is. Mm, very great potential. I've heard many times many ulama say that he his potential is so much that he without doubt will reach marja'iyya inshallah even at that young age that he's in anyway inshallah see you all next um sunday at 8 10 8 15 p.m walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina muhammad wa alihi tahirin allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad